Hi, uh, welcome back. We are in packet uh, 5.1 and we are on page 5. Um, so we're deriving new properties in triangles. That's what we're doing by drawing lines through them, right? And one of the lines that we studied last time in the previous uh, video was the mid segment. Okay, so a mid segment of a triangle, so a segment that connects, we know that now, the midpoints, right, connects the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. So that's what we have over here. We have a mid segment over here. I know it's a mid segment because it connects the midpoint of this side. This is equal to that. And the midpoint of this side, E, with this line segment, BE, being congruent to line segment EC of equal length, right? So our example over here would be DE, right? So that would be a triangle mid segment. Okay? So this is my triangle mid segment over here. Now, why would I do that? Obviously, because I can derive some properties, and that's my triangle mid segment theorem. It says if a segment joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, then the segment is parallel to the third side and half as long. So this segment over here turns out to be parallel to this side over here and half as long, right? So it's it's parallel, so I guess I could, could put a little arrow down there like that so I know that they are they're parallel now, right? And half as long, right? Using the above diagram, if DE, line segment DE, is the mid-segment of triangle ABC, then I know that line segment DE is parallel to line, to, uh, line segment AC, and I know that DE, no line, no, I'm not putting any line on top because I'm indicating the distance. So the distance from D to E is half the distance from A to C. Okay? So this I can all derive from that. So how do I know that? We can derive it. We can figure it out. So what we have is two triangles here. We have triangle BDE and we have triangle BAC. They're clearly not of the same size, so they wouldn't be congruent, but they look like they have the same shape. So could they be similar? Let's take a look. Well, this side over here and this side over here would be corresponding sides. And side BA looks to be twice the size of BD. Same over here. BC is twice the size of BE. So the sides are proportional. I have two proportional sides. And this angle in between angle B is the same angle for both triangles. It's part of BAC and BDE. So it's congruent unto itself. So by SAS, S, a, S, I can say that triangle B, D, E is indeed similar to triangle B, A, C. Okay, so if they're similar, I know that corresponding angles are congruent. Well, that would mean that this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle. Huh, but I know that if this angle is congruent to this angle, and I have two sides here and a transversal, if these two corresponding angles are congruent, then these sides are parallel. So that's why those sides are parallel, right? And so why is this half as long? Well, very simple, because we have to stick to that ratio. The sides are proportional. And so the sides in this smaller triangle are one to two. They're half as long, one to two. So this is also one to two. So all those properties here we derived from the fact that those two triangles we constructed were similar and we know how to prove that they're similar. So the fact that we know and we can derive that things are similar or congruent is turning out to be pretty practical, right, in deriving properties. So let's go to question number one over here. It says, identify all the, and, <clears throat> I'm sorry, all the pairs of parallel segments. Well, all we have to do is we have to look at a different segment. So if I look at this segment over here, it's parallel to this segment over here. Why? Because it joins the midpoint of these two sides, right? W is the midpoint of this side. These two are the same. And X is the midpoint of line segment QR because QX is congruent to QR. So since this line is the mid-segment joining the midpoints of both these sides, I know that it's parallel to this side over here. So I know that uh, XW, XW is parallel to RS. Right? And by the same reasoning, I know that YW is parallel to QR, YW parallel to QR, and I know that um, XW, or, I'm sorry, XY over here is parallel to QS. XY parallel to QS. Okay? Stop the video and go ahead and try question number two now. 
Let's move on to question number three. Question number three says, if L, M, and N are the midpoints of the sides of triangle PQR, so L, M, and N, they're the midpoints. So right away I can write down this just to remind myself, right? Those are the midpoints, okay? And PR is 46, so I'm going to write that down. PR is 46. LN is 17. LN over here, 17. Um, I'm sorry, and I missed one. PQ is 40, so PQ over here is 40. I want to find each measure. So let's go ahead. Let's try LM. So LM is over here. I know it's going to be parallel to PR and half the length. So if PR is 46, LM is going to be 23. MN. MN is over here. I know it's parallel and half the length of PQ, so it's going to be 20. QR. QR is over here. I know it's parallel and twice the length of LN, so it's 34. And I know MR. MR over here. This is MR over here. I know MR is half the length of QR because these two line segments are congruent. So this would be 17. Go ahead and stop the video and try question 4. Let's go to question number 5. It says, find the value of x. Right. So all we have to do when we find a value of an unknown variable is set up an equation. So what does that equation look like? Well, I know that this is the mid-segment. So I know it's parallel to this side and half its length. So s 7x sorry, is going to be half the length of 17x. Minus 18. All right? That's what I just said. This equals half this length. So that would be, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. I get 14x is 17x minus 18. So I get 3x equals 18 and x equals 6. Go ahead and stop the video and try question 6. Let's move on to the next page. So let's talk a little about the perpendicular bisectors now. So that was one of the lines that we we're going to draw and that we talked about. It's a line that's perpendicular to a side and divides it into two equal parts. Okay. And so there's a theorem that says if a point lies on a perpendicular bisector of a segment, right? So it lies on this, right? Then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Then it's equidistant. That means the same distance from the endpoints of the segment. So we took this point C. This point C is on the perpendicular bisector. It's equidistant from the endpoints. That means the distance from C to A is the same as the distance from C to B. That's what the, the perpendicular bisector theorem states. So we can memorize this, or we can use our knowledge of congruence and similarity to derive it so we don't have to memorize it. Okay, so let's take a look. Clearly, we've drawn two triangles over here. Okay, so if I can prove that these two triangles are congruent or similar, I can derive properties from them. Well, they look to be kind of congruent, right? The same size and shape. So let's see if I can use one of the theorems to prove congruence, right? Well, they're right triangles, so I can use hypotenuse leg, but I don't know what the length of the hypotenuse is over here. I don't know it. It's not given. I do know that this is a right triangle. That's given. And I do know the length of one of the legs. That's given. So I can't use the hypotenuse leg, even though it's a right triangle. However, I can use side, angle, side. This side is in both triangles by the reflexive property. It's congruent to itself. Side angle side is one of the theorems that I can use to prove two triangles congruent. So since these two triangles are congruent, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, this side corresponds to this side. So therefore, they are congruent. So line segment AC is congruent to line segment CB. Again, I can memorize the theorem, or I can simply understand, see that these two are possibly congruent, determine whether they're congruent, and figure out that corresponding sides of congruent triangles are congruent. So the converse, let's look at the converse over here. What if they told us that the hypotenuse over here is congruent and that CD, right, this is also given. So line CD is perpendicular to line segment AB, right? We're talking about the perpendicular bisector. So this is perpendicular to this side. And now I know the distance CA is congruent to the distance CB. So that's given. Okay. What can I derive from that? Well, again, let's take a look at these two triangles over here. And now I can use the hypotenuse like theorem because they tell me that the hypotenuse is the same in both triangles. And this is one of the legs and it's congruent unto itself. So by the hypotenuse like theorem, these two triangles are congruent. Since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, 
I know that AD, which corresponds to BD, will be congruent. So AD is congruent to DB. Okay, so again, I can memorize that theorem or I can just derive it. So question number one says, find the value of x. If I look at these two triangles, I see that these two triangles are congruent by the side angle side theorem. So corresponding parts will be congruent. So 7x plus 24 is going to be equal to 13x minus 48. Right? I could have also used um, the perpendicular bisector theorem up top to figure that out. Right? So here we go. So I get 6x equals um, 60, 72. So x equals 12. Go ahead and stop the video and try question number <clears throat> question number two. <clears throat> Let's go to question number three. It says find RS. So I'm looking for RS over here, the length of RS. So I have to figure out what x is and then substitute that value back in to the expression 4x plus 5 to determine the length of rs. So let's look at these two triangles I over, have over here. They look pretty congruent to me. Can I determine that they're congruent? Yes, by the side angle side theorem they are congruent. Corresponding parts are congruent as well. I could also just use the perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay, so 7x minus 22 equals 4x plus 5. 4x uh, plus 5. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this. So I get 3x equals 27. x equals 9. I'm not done, though, because they want the distance from R to S, R to S. So I substitute that back in. So I get RS 4 times 9, which is 36 plus 5, is 41. Go ahead and stop the video and try question 4. Question number 5. It says find the distance from A to B. Find the distance from A to B, this whole distance. And each side has its own expression, right? This is 3x plus 17, 5x minus 11. So again... I, I'm looking at this. I see two triangles. They look pretty much congruent. Can I prove that they're congruent? Well, let's see. The right triangles, I know the length of the hypotenuse is congruent, and this side is reflexed by the reflexive property is congruent unto itself, so I can use the HL theorem to prove they're congruent. I could also use the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, as we saw above. In any case, I know that these two triangles are congruent, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent so this corresponds to this they are congruent they are the same so my equation reads 5x minus 11 equals 3x plus 17. remember when you're solving for a variable you need to put together an equation okay so i get 2x equals 28 x equals 14. i'm not done because they want the length of a b so a b well a b is this part plus this part so I need to substitute 14 in to the sum of those two expressions. So let's take the sum first. So I get 5x minus 11 plus 3x uh, plus 17 equals uh, 8x plus 6. I'm going to substitute 14 in. So 8 times 14. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times, um, 8 times 4 is 32. So I've got 112 plus 6 is 118. And I'm done. Thank you.